Okay, this is um, Biblical Separation Part 3. Uh -uh. No talking. Biblical Separation Part 3. I apologize for babies talking in the background. Um, we'll try to bring the mic up a little closer. You can hear me better. <coughs> okay, we've got Carol and one and Mike. Okay. Glad to have you all this evening. Um, we're uh, going to begin with 1 Corinthians chapter 8, and we're going to do quite a bit of uh, reading tonight. We've done biblical separation. This is the third uh, study on that, and we talked about how God is separated, how He is holy and separated, and so His people should be holy and separated. Um, we went through the law last week. Old Testament and the New Testament and the things that we look at in the law, if I remember that. Then this week we're going to look at um, separation from worldly and sinful pleasures, practices, and associations. Separation from the world, we'll say. Separation from the world. <coughs> um, we talked about the law last week. And this week we're going to look at the law of love, 1 Corinthians chapter 8. 1 Corinthians 8. I guess I should find it. Do y'all have any of your wireless devices going where it's drawn on the internet? Tell me again where we are. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Um, Angie, if you'd read 1 Corinthians 8, 1 through 6, please. <clears throat> now, as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. And if any man thinks that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know what an idol is, nothing in this world, and that there is none other God but one. For though there be that are called God, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be God's many and Lord's many, but to us there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Okay. Now, most of you have studied this at some time in your life. You've looked at um, having things offered unto idols. It is a... Uh, um, study that a lot of people don't connect with modern Christian walk, do they? Because, and I'll, I'll give the little brief background of technically, if you could say it that way, they were they were discussing going to the meat market, having meat, or going to a temple where animals were sacrificed, and they had a meat market around the back. The animals were were good animals, and they were sacrificed to false idols. Right. People were buying that meat, and the issue came up is, should a Christian eat that meat? Uh, should that be an issue in a Christian's life? So, he's talking about, we know that there's that those gods were not real gods. Right, right. Right? So, what's he, what's he saying here that um, in this discussion, has he talked about, is this right, right or wrong? Has he gotten to that yet? No. Okay. Hadn't said yet. So what what kind of modern day thing can you relate this to? Anything or is this just totally off the wall? Well, some food is blessed by that the Muslim prayer. So yeah. yeah. That's true. That's true. So there are some things that happen in our lives that may really offend us, or it may be a nothing issue, but it, other people may be offended by that, right? 
Okay, well, I, let's... Think, I think there's a lot of things in this modern society that fit this situation. Okay. I mean, I, I can think right now of sporting events and how churches close their Sunday night service and bring in a big screen TV and sit there watching a sporting event instead of having their service. Right. And they see nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. To me, that is the same as this situation. It's it's calling something that is not of God okay to partake in. I don't think it's necessarily something you ingest in your mouth eating, but anything that you take into your life, I think is what it's talking about. And then and then calling it okay. Yeah. I mean maybe I'm off off here. Well. But you're right in the fact that some people are offended by it. Some people see it's absolutely nothing wrong, and they're real confused why it would even bother you. Right? Okay, so let's and along that that train of thought. So who's next, Sarah? If you would read seven through. Uh, seven through nine, if you would. Albeit there is not in every man that knowledge. For some was conscious of the idol, and to this hour eat it as a thing offered unto an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. But meat commendeth us not to God, for neither if we eat are we the better, neither if we eat not are we the worse. But take heed lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to the end of the week. Okay, so we we have a revelation here in what he's just written us. And what is that revelation? That it doesn't really matter. That it doesn't matter technically. But yeah. what's was the last verse you just read say? But don't do it if you're a stumbling block. Okay. And how would it be a stumbling block? Would it be a stumbling block to those who decided not to eat? Or to those that decided to eat to the other people that were offended? Well, I think it's a stumbling block to those who, well, the way I see it is people who've had a problem or have done that in the past, doing it to the idol, and then trying to come away from idol worship, would want to abstain from anything to do with that. But then they see this Christian brother who is guiding them eating it too. Right. It could be a cause for temptation to fall back into the life they were leading. Amen. Okay. So the real thing is not... It's written to the person who would cause the offense, not the person right. who would be led back astray, right? Right. Is that what we're saying? Are we our brother's keeper? Are we our brother's keeper? Right. Okay. So Paul is talking about not creating a situation that causes other Christians to fall. Right. It is our responsibility. Right. As brothers, to not do that. Okay. And look at, at verse 9 how he terms that. This liberty of yours. The liberty would have been you have the freedom to eat meat that you could get cheap. There's nothing supernatural about it, it's just meat that you would get at a market. You would get it cheap. It would probably be very good meat because it had to be animals that were good animals. They couldn't be blemished animals, even the ones sacrificed to false gods. They used good animals, right? Right. So these animals had good meat on them, and to a person that didn't make any, they just liked steak. They wanted to get a good steak. You know, it didn't bother me one way or another. My family, they don't even know where I get my meat. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. But what about the person that sees you buying that? They did. Amen. Shall we say it? Wine, beer, liquor. Yeah, what about the person who sees you going down to the, the idol, the uh, temple, uh -huh. and you're going around back, and you're buying the meat from there, and that person doesn't know God, right? And so you see that as a responsibility is what we're seeing here, and I mean, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. No, you're right. Right. So there's there is a liberty in that. Yes, you can do that, 
but they're not that's not the question here do you agree that the question shouldn't be is it permissible is it right or wrong we, we're we've been asking the wrong questions in the church instead of asking the right questions if you're looking at is it a sin? Is it a sin to drink wine? Is it a sin to eat meat and sacrifice to idols? Is it a sin to have a football team that we follow? It, you know, all those things in your life, every issue in your life needs to be questioned. Not, well, that's not one of the Ten Commandments, so I guess I can do it. That's, you know, smoking cigarettes not even in the Bible, so I don't have to worry about it. You know, on and on and on. You keep going through every issue of life, and you say, doesn't really matter. Okay, Look in verse 8. But meat commandeth us not to God, for neither if we eat are we the better, neither if we eat not are we the worse. So he says it doesn't make any difference. You know, it's going in your body. That that part we understand. Then the word but, but take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. Okay, so that's verse nine. That's verse nine. First Corinthians eight nine, but take heed. But take heed. So even though this the far as far as the issue of right or wrong. Can you do it or can you not? It's a, it's a, we say a moot point. That's not the question. The question is, take heed that you don't cause a stumbling block to someone. I love the story of a family that talked to to Angie and they said somebody in their house was allergic to, I'm gonna say chocolate, but everybody else in the house love chocolate and so this person was saying that the family said even though we all love chocolate this our sister our brother our daughter our son is allergic to it you can eat it it won't bother you but if that person eats it they could literally kill them because it swelled their throat together right peanut butter eggs whatever the, the allergy can be and if you think about that and they say in order to not provide a danger to that person we won't have that in our house yeah. right? right so Christians have been selfish in saying I can do this it doesn't bother me it's not a salvation issue that won't send me to hell because I'm doing that what about the people you're sending to hell that's right what about that's the people right that it does offend? What about the people that it does hurt? And if love is motivating everything you do, the love for others and the love for your brothers and sisters in Christ, that will matter more than the convenience of you just going to buy that meat. Yes. It's just easy if I just go buy it. I know who I might see. I'll just do it privately and hurry and do it. The love of it is what matters. And that's what he said there in verse one, knowledge comes up, but love edifies. Love teaches us to do things in a better way, yes. for a better reason. Yes. And, and in a good, another good example, and we can do this from practical experience in the past few months, there have been some, uh, some protests that have gone on, some boycotts of some companies that supported gay marriage, that supported uh, immoral lifestyles, and we decided to cut that out entire product lines. I think Nabisco was one of them. Right? Nabisco, crap, there's, there's a bunch of them. And the thing is, it is a little bit of a challenge to start living without that. Is it not? Yes, it is. It's, I mean, you know, I love Pig Newtons, but they happen to be made by a company that is supporting immorality. And we, Oreos, Oreos is one of them. Yeah. And we have not had Oreos in over a year, and it was a family favorite. Yeah. And uh, Burger Goodbye. King is yeah. one of the companies. There's a whole bunch of companies. Well, the point is not that if it's right or wrong, I can eat a Burger King burger. I'm not going to go to hell. Yeah, the but point you have a car that we all buy the wrapper in your car. That's right. <laughs> <laughs>
the, the point is, you know, would you, would they somebody see you that you proclaim you're a Christian when you're supporting this? Exactly. Rock music. When I was growing up, I remember everybody, um, all of us teenagers telling the, the parents, it's not bad. These, these people don't, they're not, they're not talking about, you know, Satanism or worshiping the devil or anything, but yet their lifestyles promoted promiscuity, immorality, they did drugs, they did all that, but yeah, the music was, you could sway back and forth to it, you could dance to it, and the words were not immoral in them in themselves, and so when you look at that, you, you're making excuses for living stuff that is not right for Christians. So, this says, is it right, is it lawful, is it permissible, is it a salvation issue, are not the questions we should ask. Let me read that again. You should not ask the question, is it right, is it lawful, is it permissible, or is it a salvation issue? You okay. should not ask those questions. Okay. Is yeah. it right? Is it lawful? Okay. Is it right? Is it lawful? Is it permissible? Or is it a salvation issue? They're the wrong questions to ask. Now I'm about to give you the right questions to ask. Okay. Um, then we're going to finish reading the chapter. Um, Andy, you got your Bible out there? You read uh, ten through thirteen, please. <clears throat> For if any man see which hath knowledge, sit at me and I'll teach him. Shall I touch the hill which is weak, be in bold and see these things off idols. If those that all shall be shall the weak not perish from Christ died. For when the crowd of all new sin took against the brethren and wound of weak conscience. Wow. If you read that passage, if you read that passage and you apply it, we have all been in sin, haven't we? Yeah. So we we've all taken a word that my my pastor in Birmingham used to say, a lack of days that we'll have. I'm going to heaven. I've got my fire insurance. I don't care. And so we've taken a bad attitude and we literally says, but when you sin so against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. So is it sin? Yes. It is. Right. It's sin if you eat meat sacrificed to idols because you could you could be offending someone and never even know it, could you? It could be going on. So we have a law that stands higher than thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do this. We have a law that actually for the new covenant it is even tougher than do's and don'ts. I mean, think about it. Ten things, that, that's just ten rules. That's pretty pretty simple, straightforward. Well, it's not one of the ten, so I can do it. That's the way most people see it. But in the New Covenant, it's not that way. Every action. And we, we understand as parents that children see us and they, and they learn what to do and what to not do. I remember a, a friend of mine, when he, was, uh, when he was a parent of a small child, he had this habit of impatience driving. And he he said he'd get. In fact, I've been I've been in the vehicle with him when this would happen, and sitting there in a line of cars, and and uh, all of a sudden the light changes green. He's three or four cars back, and he says, "Why is the light green? And I'm not moving." You know, so he he's got this habit, and so he wants he wants when the light changes green, he wants all the cars to move. Well, you know, the first person look when look down the seat, and there's a, there's always a delay time. And one day, from the back seat of his car, a little three-year-old said, why is the light green and we're not moving? 
Uh -huh. Aha. Yeah. Yes. So children, those less experienced, those less mature, they pick up on that. So quickly. Yes. And so what about Christians? What about baby Christians? What about Christians that just don't know any better? What about Christians that come from a background of alcoholism and they see you and then your liberty, you got you drink a glass of wine every day. And I'm not saying that you can't, you know, alcohol we have in medicines, but I'm saying if you socially drink every day, you are you are probably leading somebody astray. Somebody will know about that. Somebody. Well, I, I just want to share too. I have it it makes me This whole gay marriage thing and the, all of the homosexual thing eats at my heart because these are sins that are being perpetuated on children. They're trying to change the nation so that the next generation doesn't even have a thought in their head against that. And not too long ago, I posted something on my personal Facebook wall about boycotting some food company and I got slammed by somebody that I really liked, I cared about. We had never had a spiritual discussion but I, can't, I liked this person and she just slammed me, unfriended me, didn't want anything else to do with me and she wrote in there you don't, you have people, you have gays in your family, you just don't know it. And I, there was no chance to respond. And I wanted to say, I do know it. I know who they are. They're going to hell. I love them dearly, but they're going to hell. And that is part of why I am so intent to boycott these companies. And I am getting to a point. If I say online, I will not eat another Oreo because they are publicly announcing their support, their financial support to create materials that will be given to children to teach them that homosexuality is completely normal. And then I go buy an Oreo cookie or I post a picture online of myself eating an Oreo milkshake. I have compromised my my witness. Yes. And it but that's part of why I post this stuff to force myself, the weak Angie Burl, to make a stand. We can stand back and say nothing. Like she was saying a minute ago, we can go around the back of the building and buy the meat sacrificed to idols. Late at night when nobody else is around and nobody sees us, we can keep it silent. Right. But what is that saying? What is that telling the world? We have no standards. Right. We don't care. And, and I'll tell you, I get frustrated when I see God's people being silent. Because in silence is agreement. That's right. And as God's people, we need to stand up against evil. We need to make our voice known. It needs to be out there. And and if you don't, then you are causing weaker brothers to do less. Okay. They are emboldened if we do more. You see what I'm saying? Yes, and so the separation, and that's our topic, separation from ways of the world go beyond the Ten Commandments. Right? They go beyond... Thou shalt not, and thou shalt. Right? The separation in your actions go beyond that into, and that's why I said we've got a different law, and that's the law of love. We are bound by love to love people to the point where we will sacrifice. If you love Oreos, if you love you know, wine, if you love whatever you love, and it's bleeding somebody away, if you've got chocolate in your house, and you've got a diabetic, and they can't eat chocolate, cut out the chocolate for that person's sake, right? That is sin when you're not doing it. Now, I know a lot of people go, oh, I can't believe you said that. 
Well, I just read here that if it caused your weaker brother to perish for whom Christ died, then you sin against Christ. I have known of churches that that uh, advocated Christians drinking a little bit of wine. Just drink a little bit of wine. It's okay. And yes, technically, drinking wine is not going to send you to hell because Jesus said it's not what goes in your body that condemns you, it's what comes out of your body. And he said what goes in your body doesn't go into your heart. And your heart's what condemns you. But if you look at that, and you've got a, an alcoholic, and you ruin his life, well, Brother Paul does it, right? And I may be able to do it and it not ever bother me. I may never get drunk in it, but I am sinning because I have just led him astray. Amen? Verse 13, Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth lest I make my brother to offend. He said, I'll cut out meat altogether. If it all comes from the idol. Right? That's the problem with us, is we don't want to not do anything. We want to be able to do anything that's even slightly, if it's questionable, we take the side of our flesh. We take, well, I'm going to do it anyway, because it's probably okay. Instead of taking the the avenue of righteousness at all cost. Okay. Romans chapter 14, 1 through 9. Romans 14, 1 through 9. This is very similar. Um, no, Romans 14, 1 through 9. Romans 14, 1 through 9. Um, you're feeding back there? Okay. Uh, Haley, could you read... Uh, uh, one through six, please. Him that is weak in the faith, receive him, but not to be not to doubtful disputation. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him with which eateth not judge him that eateth. For God hath received him. Who art thou that judgest another sin servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be held up. For God is able to make him stand. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day, to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. Okay, this can be read that it almost sounds like the opposite thing. Just be convinced in your mind, and you can do anything you want to. So let's study through this and see what it's saying. Okay. Then we'll start. What is this telling us? If it's te is it telling us that we we really don't have to worry, but as long as we're all convinced, you may be convicted, but that you know, we all need to just do what we need to do. I can't believe that that would say that anywhere in Word of God's Word. So. Are we getting any comments tonight? I yeah. Um, Carol said, preach it, Angie. Um, she said, think better of others than yourself. Deny yourself for the safety and betterment of others. And do it out of love for Christ and one's neighbor. Everybody else is pretty quiet. All right. 
pretty quiet. It must be that's agreement, right? That's right. They must be. They must be in agreement if they're quiet. To me, he's just saying that if you don't believe that that, by, by your interpretation of the word and your partial study of it, you don't believe that you should follow that day or you should not follow that day, just stop that. Or whatever you're talking about, then you need to know and be sure and then rest assured in that. And don't get mad at somebody else for not doing it or for doing it if they are going to You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I just mean that's what this person is talking about. Now, I feel that I feel that's kind of way it goes. It's not really considering what what sin is, what sin is. It's about small things of doctrine, small things of church fellowship, small things of holy days, things that basically you can agree on and still be righteous. Right? Because right? right? we all talk about something we agree on the truth. And something we all agree completely mix our minds. And we all judge on those small, small things. The small interpretive scriptures that don't mean a whole lot, but that cause the big issues, we're going to bring it up. The small things cause the biggest problems in church. Right. That's very true. That's very true. This is not addressing, though, big doctrinal issues that should be clear. Yes. Well, we're, we're, we're really bad to pull one-liners out, pull a verse out of context. So I want us to think about all this in context. And um, how far was we going to read through um, Did we read the six yet? Okay, so he that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. He that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he does not regard it. He that eateth the eateth to the Lord, he that, for he giveth thank God thanks, and he that eateth not the Lord he eateth not and giveth God thanks. I know there are a lot of people that um, they their diet is very specific. And they believe, well, it's not right for me to eat this or this or this. And he's talking about judging other people by your standards. If you look back in verse um, 4, Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he is able to he shall be holding up for God is able to make him stand. You know, there are things that God has shown me and each of you revelations of truth that you didn't know ten years ago. Agree? We've all had things that all of a sudden, well, oh, I'm starting to get this now. You know, after 40 years, I guess I'm a little slow. I'm starting to get it. Still starting to get a bunch of stuff right. after 40 years. Well, what about when you do get it and you get it firmly and it's deep truth in you and then all of a sudden you realize somebody else doesn't got it yet then you then you start saying you know oh you start judging them that's what he's talking about we all answer to God for those things right Suzanne said the Bible doesn't contradict itself um, and then she asked is this more of an affirmation to not be ourselves wavered in our own Convictions when we are dealing with a weaker brother or sister. Uh, that's that's a good a good statement, and I'm reminded of a time when we had a family that came to church with us that didn't celebrate Christmas, and so to not offend them, they was coming through the holiday season, and to not offend them, our entire family did not decorate for Christmas that year because we had church here. Y'all remember that year? Yeah. And then after January, we discovered that that family celebrated Christmas anyway. They just came in and told us that kind of thing. And sometimes you start, you start trying to bend your beliefs. People are just testing you to see. You know, it's like they're pulling your chain just to see. Well, what we did was the last Sunday before Christmas was like four days before Christmas. And we agreed because they had young children. Hang on. Y'all go with me. Okay. Yeah, we, we just decorated the last few days so that the decorations weren't up during the month of December. And, and anyway, it turned out that it, 
it was such a dreary thing for our family. We we used it as a time of worship, you know, a time of the advent of Christ. And, you know, we were robbed of that by trying to um, trying to cater to someone else that turned out that wasn't their belief anyway. Amen. So we have to we have to be cautious in those kind of things, not to offend people, but also not to fall. I think that's what Suzanne was talking about, not to give away your standards because of somebody else. Amen. Um, you read it, didn't you, Harry? Okay, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna start back with. Um, verse seven: For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord; and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. So we have the requirement to love our brother, amen. To not offend. To not do things that would lead them astray, questionable things, or weaker brothers. Amen? Amen? Y'all got quiet. Everybody still thinking about it? But this is really talking to those who, well, where does, where does encouraging and leading a brother to truth come into this space? I mean, because if I know that to have a deeper walk with Christ, you have to do this certain thing, and I'm trying to share another brother, is that not me telling him what he needs to be doing? No, I think there can always be discipleship among Christians. Um, if you uh, if you met someone who said, "Yeah, I'm a Christian. I just don't go to church," then you can start giving them the scripture that says, "You know, you need to be assembling. Don't forsake the assembling of the saints." And even more so, as you see the day approaching, that means, you know, if we say, "Well, I go every Sunday. People that worship on Sabbath every Saturday." I go. I worship once a week. You know, that's my Sabbath. That's my that's my worship day. Well, how can you be even more so as the day approaches and just do it one time a week, right? Yeah. So it has to be a daily time that you do it. Well, you and I know that, but maybe Christians may not know that. They may think I join the church. I'm gonna be in the bass boat on Sunday, right? So you just have to mentor them and disciple them so that they can grow and I don't think that's being judgmental you just have to accept that you know they can't understand things the way you can and you, you're trying to bring them up to that not in a judge, judging way I don't think I think I think anything that's the first scripture we can find scripture back at court it's not one of the issues Paul's talking about right if, if, if it's the scripture and it's scripture against the for it it's settled. Now, if it's, if it's one of those, you know, those grammars we can interpret differently, we we to be careful with trail there rightly, but that's when we show up for our lives the better way. You know, if they don't think it's well, let's say they find something, well, well we, maybe ask them some of the script something. Maybe I'll listen to music, music. I listen to hymns. They listen to not bad music, but more music. Well, I can I show my life that my life's better and more godly because I worship the hymns only? And that's where I think if, if we believe we have the right way, it would not be judgmental or something that's not doctrinal, not, not Bible, you know, not scripture back completely. We do do the core basically and show how it improves our lives in relation to Christ and it's that way because 
you can convince them if you got scripture backed up. We, that, I think a lot of Christians know the math too much, but there's scripture backing on something when it's just not shut. Right. But if you've got the right way to know it, then take them with that right way and prove to them that's the better way. Amen. We're looking for a passage. Give me a second. We've got about 15 minutes left. Okay, let's look at 1 Corinthians 10.23. 1 Corinthians 10.23. Everybody got it? Okay, Sarah, if you'd read 23 through uh, 26, please. 1 Corinthians 10, 23. We're at 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 10, 23 through 26. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Whosoever is sold is a shambles, that eats. But uh, whatsoever is sold is sorry. <laughs> whatsoever is sold is a shambles, that eats. Asking no questions for a conscience faith. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Okay. He's continuing on this thought about not offending your brother. Okay. And he talks about for conscience sake. He's talking about not offending weaker brothers, not leading people astray. He says all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. All things are lawful, but all things edify not. So the question is not is it permissible, is it lawful, is it a salvation issue? And here I'm giving you the questions to answer. Everybody ready? Hang on. Did y'all did read this line that Carol wrote? Well, no, I don't have to chat up. Okay, it said, as Christians we can have fellowship without agreeing on non-essentials. Have mutual forbearance. God is the judge, not us. The Lord is our goal in our lives. Amen. Amen. Okay, so here's the questions from this, based on the scripture we've read tonight. The questions are that we, that we judge our actions by what we can and can't do. Is it profitable? Is it useful? Will it edify? Will it glorify God? And I'll come back to those and you can write them down. Will it hinder my growth or the growth of someone else? Will it present a clear testimony before the lost? Okay. Will it, is it profitable? Is it useful? Will it edify? Will it glorify God? Will it edify, will it what? Will it glorify God? <laughs> Will it hinder my growth or the growth of someone else? Okay. And will it present a clear testimony before the lost? Much different than the normal questions we ask ourselves. That's right. Okay, so let's, can someone just pick an issue? Let's just use this as a litmus test. Pick an issue, any issue, and let's say something that's questionable to some Christians and others people don't see anything wrong with it pick an issue hang on I'm trying to think of one I'm not talking about a hobby you know a eating ice cream those I'm talking about okay say it again going to a college football game okay Let's go through these questions. Is it profitable? 
Nope. Uh, is it useful? I'm sure some people would say, well, I'm going to have John 3.16 there. Well, these hearing aids are tuned to this frequency. Charlie, okay. I need you to read the questions one more time because apparently a commercial was going on. Okay. Okay. Since, since I'm glad that I'm going to post the notes yes. but they can't participate if they don't know what they are. Based on the scriptures we've read tonight and what we've just read about seeking other one's wealth and all, all things are lawful but not all things are no, but not all things edify. Here are the questions that we are supposed to ask. We're not supposed to ask, is it right, is it lawful, is it permissible, or is it a salvation issue? Which is what everybody always asks. Well, there's nothing in Scripture, so I can do it. That's not what we're supposed to ask. What we're supposed to ask is, is it profitable? Is it useful? Will it edify? Will it glorify God? Will it hinder my growth or the growth of others? Will it present a clear testimony before the lost? Okay? So, the issue Andy gave, will it glorify God? That that would really be a stretch to say going to a football game would be, a, would be glorifying God. Some people would see that was well, just like a hobby, like doing anything else, going fishing or anything. But will it glorify God? Will it hinder my growth or the growth of others? Will it present a clear testimony before the lost? When you go through all these questions, it will help you determine in what you should do and not do. And you will find that a lot of things you're doing, you need to stop. And a lot of things you're not doing, you need to start. Right? Let's look through the rest of that. We've got a few more minutes. We read through uh, 26. And who read? Uh, Sarah, Angie, you didn't read. If you'd read 27 through 29. The reason I saw here, too, though, it, uh, what's the subject? Did that eat asking no question for customers? I know it's kind of funny, but Paul's almost, almost like giving an out here, so to speak. To the people of Corinth who are basically one of the people. If you don't know, then it's okay. You're not in trouble. Right. Once you know, the game's up. Exactly. And I think that that's something we don't we don't do a lot of time is just him knows who knows his sin, yeah, who knows his wrong, his wrong if you know it's wrong, it's him sin. If you know better, you're sin. And I and I appreciate you saying that, Andy, because that that is a good clarification of at this time, there were people who maybe happened to go to someone's house, be served a meal, and not know that that meat was not, and, and the, the issue was not that you should live under condemnation, worried to death that I'm going to eat something sacrificed to idols, because I've already established that it is sin in my heart, and, it's, and I shouldn't do this, and worried to death that you've done that, but he said, whatever is sold in the shambles, that eat, asking no question for conscience sake. So he's telling you, don't worry about it, but like Andy said, but if you know it, if they say, you know what, we bought this at the idle market, then you know that you are condoning, right, you're condoning that to that person, and they see that as your testimony. Okay, Mike and Wanda, do we amend our meals when we dine out with friends that are vegetarians? Do you not believe that the other party has an obligation to respect our way? Jesus made wine out of water, knowing there were probably people at the reception that would abuse it. It was up to the others not to encourage drunkenness. We are supposed to lead by example. Yes. And I, would, I wouldn't have a problem if it offended someone if I ate meat. But if I thought that they really had scriptural basis for that, which I don't believe anybody has scriptural basis for never eating meat, but if I thought that it, you know, even if it just offended somebody, I wouldn't have a problem eating just vegetables. You know, that's what we're talking about is you're supposed to be crucifying your flesh. You're supposed to be denying your flesh. Instead, we've got a church that says, 
do what you want to do. You got freedom in Christ. We this, should. Uh, we should always be seeking to sacrifice for our brother if it's a godly issue. Yes. We should never be forcing our own will. Wasn't weren't they asking though? Like if somebody came over that didn't eat meat, you know that part of y'all not offending, so should we not? Should we give them meat? But should what they asking? Shouldn't the vegetarians respect our thing? I think that is what Mike and Wanda are saying. Shouldn't they respect what we're doing? But you can't change the other person. Right. You can only do what you can do. Yeah, I think a lot of times the question is we, we could, you could go to scripture and completely go so far that if you pick anybody, it's a problem. But I think it's far too small. Know. If it's, they got scriptural backing, if it means so spiritually, in a right way, as, as Christians, we need to back down, we need to understand. Now, if there's a defense, oh, they're cheating on me, then it's then it like, you know, you can't, you just have to do the you know, because you well, you, you believe in, you know, you believe in sitting on a couch, and that offends me. Well, why are you offending me? Well, I, I don't think you still on a couch. That's not a good reason. Now, if they say, if they say, you know, I can still pull out the family of chocolate. They say, well, I can't see it because it, it bothers me. It, it, you know, I think, oh, here's how I say, I learned peanuts. Of course, we will take it. You get out of the way. You'll bounce it. But they say, I eat peanuts because I eat peanuts. But obviously, that's one issue of this called the problem. I think that's, I think that's two different ways to look at it. If they're called the problem, this is called the problem. That's when we can't back down our true belief, our true way. I don't want the words. Or convictions. And if they have a reason, and you can see their reason, understand their reason, then we, we should sacrifice what we want. To, to, to right. But well, we all know different. We, we, it's pretty obvious who's offended to be offended. We solve problems. We make sure we make sure to get offended. And that's what we should have. Right. And, and that shows maturity of I can eat meat or not. Right. Not I could eat chocolate or not. If everybody, you know, realized that chocolate was making them sick, then I'd quit eating chocolate. Right? I mean, we 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 need to start thinking about denying ourselves things that might be a problem for other people. And I'm talking about obviously spiritual issues. I mean, like for instance, you ain't having beef, and the person you know said, "Well, I can't have beef because I've got high blood pressure really bad." It could actually yeah, you and, and Carol just wrote you agree to disagree on some issues and that it is that way. It, it, but it really boils down to the to the spiritual points, and is this going to wound the spiritual walk of someone? Right. You just step away. You know, right. you just step away. You don't. You don't. You know, we have a lot of friends, godly people that we love dearly, who see no point in head covering and plane We don't. We don't. Remove them from our life because they disagree. The only time that that even has become an issue is when somebody comes into the plain lifestyle and tells us that they believe this is of God, it's written in Scripture, the Lord's convicted them to do this. And then, out of the blue, they get upset about something and they just quit. Right. Those people are in rebellion to God, not to us, right. and we pull back to leave them time to, to really pray. Right. But these other issues, it's not, it's not the same thing. Yeah, I don't think that's mean. I don't think Paul's saying if we have high standards, we should lower our standards to suit somebody else. Right. right. If, we, we, you know, if we believe that something's wrong, and they was right, and they call our house to do that wrong thing. We say no, that we believe that's wrong. I think that's something we watch too. Sometimes we get in a muddle 
Well, well, you're a witch, Christian, so I need to do the love rocking to your level. Well, I feel it makes me mad. But if what we got is truth, and we witness truth, and we are pointing to our minds, we can't do that. We can't bring us to that level. No, obviously, that, that, if we know the mind that can edify them, we do that. And we can stand on our own our conviction. And I think that's good. It's totally important between not trying to offend them spiritually and for the right reason, and thinking, well, that's going to offend them for the wrong reason. You know, if they're in sin, we all do well, I've got a whole bunch more scripture, but I want to look at one more. We've got about two minutes. Uh, 1 John chapter 2, 15 through 17. 1 John chapter 2, 15 through 17. First John 2, 15 through 17. First John 2, 15 through 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Now that is a deep passage of scripture that has got all kind of venues that you could go down. But I want to say that we have been guilty of loving the world and putting that as our standards. Instead of offending our brother and not doing something or cutting something out or abstaining from something that offends them. Right? Don't let your liberty be a stumbling block. Amen? Amen. So we are separated finishing this study, we are separated from worldly pleasures, practices, and associations. Yes. Amen? Amen. I haven't even touched on fasting, but that's something not even heard of in the church anymore, is people fasting. Going without a meal. Cutting something out of your life. Because it helps you spiritually, helps you crucify your flesh, because you need to cut that out. You know, we're an indulgent society, and the church is following right along with that. Name it, claim it, blab it, grab it. Well, it's going to get much worse very quickly. It's already in there. I mean, how could we have believed we would be in this place 10 years ago? That's right. It is, it is quickly coming on us. I mean, our own president stood up and told us said that we were worse, that we were as bad or worse than the people who just burned a man alive. That's right. It's going to He's get playing bad. that down. He's trying to play down a, a horrific act by saying that Christians are just as guilty. And throwing the Christians yes. to the wolves. So. Right. Right. I mean in the broadcast or in the recording, hang on just a second. <laughs> 